So I have gotten a lot of questions about making the patterns for the tight knit bracelet. And I've been asked to do a tutorial just on how I do the patterns and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you what I do and places that you can look for different patterns. And um, that should help you figure out your own and you can make your own patterns. So let's get started. So the first thing, of course, is the graph paper is so, so helpful in making your designs. And especially once you figure out, like, how many squares you like, how, like, how long you want your brace bracelets to be, then it's so much easier to make a pattern and make it symmetrical, which bugs me. Mine's not symmetrical. Um, so the graph paper comes in very handy. You can do, um, you can print out, like, from the computer, like, a grid paper. Um, they do have, like, pixel art things on like your iPad or iPhone or I guess any app and you can do pictures on there. Um, I do mine in color pencils and I have regular pencils, erasers. Sometimes I'll just go sit by the pool and just go through and think of ideas and stuff. So and usually for my designs, you know, one design takes me like three pieces of graph paper because I'm trying to figure out how I want it to look. So the graph paper comes in very handy. And like I said, you can print out a grid on um, the computer, and that would work too. You can even do it on line paper, just make lines go in the opposite direction. So that comes in very handy. Okay, so the first thing, once you kind of figure, you want to figure out how long you need your bracelet to be, I would say do a three-row uh, tight-knit bracelet and do it in like a pattern. Fives are probably better. This one was, let's see, one, two, three, four. So like from counting the pink, one, two, three, four, to the next pink, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. This is probably 48. And usually when you make them wider, you need them a little bit bigger. So I would just make one, I don't know, if you're a smaller person, probably f maybe 50, and just go from there. See, like, this has a little bit of room. I could actually add an extra one on there if I needed it. So I probably would have made that a little bit bigger. So I probably would have gone 51, 52. I know when I do my, my big ones, I like to do um, at least 56. So that's not, so I can, like roll it around like that and it's I can stick you know two fingers in there. So it's very important if you're gonna do especially lettering or you want your um, bracelet to be symmetrical that you know how many rows you need. So and when you do it, um, I when I first started out leave on here. Well if you start the pattern right at the beginning, it doesn't line up as good. This one's not as bad as some of the other ones I've done. So what I like to do is I like to do a couple of rows in a solid color just to um, break it away from there and then have the pattern go. So that's me if you want to start with um, just starting the pattern. Um, I don't know. I just like it. When it looks. It, to me it looks cleaner. So like I said, so you will need a little bit uh, longer if you're going to do it wider because if you just do it right here this part's a lot thinner than um, the bigger part of your rest. So and if you're doing a pattern be careful watching TV. I've had to go and redo a bunch of stuff because I got lost in my pattern from watching TV. Okay so I want to add with the length of the bracelet that eight rows is one inch. So maybe if you find out how long you want the bracelet or how long one that you have, how long that is, you can find out how many uh, rows you need for when you make your pattern. So for the graph paper, uh, at least on mine, there's two different sides. This one is a bigger square than this one. So this one actually goes 55 across for the square, so that's usually what I do and I know that my bracelet will fit across there so I can't remember how many I wrote down somewhere on my how many were in each one so one is 55 across and one is 44 across 
So, but check with your whichever graph paper you get. So when I make my designs, you should see how many papers I go through trying to figure out different designs. So, you know, I finally I get my nice drafts and that's what I show you guys. But this is different things that I've tried. And so just trial and error. This one is this one right here. See, so it doesn't look like much there, but once you get it on the, the bracelet, it looks much better. So you just kind of fiddle around, do your different, I was trying to do a flag for this one, American flag, but it wouldn't be, the stripes wouldn't fit right. And then, oh, this one, I love this one. It's a Zelda. I want to do this bow. This is probably going to be my next project. I found that on, just on online, I looked up pixel art. You can look at like pixel bows, pixel fruit, and like a lot of the perler stuff works. But, um, like I said, sometimes they're too big. This one's nine. Maybe I'll do that one next. So that one's from Mario. So you can find these everywhere. So just keep trying and eventually you'll get the design you want. Okay, so as far as making the patterns, this one is this guy right here. And so like the the bees are for black. And it's you get your pattern as you want it on the paper. And this one I probably took me three or four sheets of graph paper because the squares were too small or too big or they wouldn't line up. Like I wanted like half the half of it right here and so it took me a while to get this one and I probably made it a lot harder than it really is because I tend to do that but um so that is this one right here I don't know if you want to see if you can see that if you want to copy that just take a screenshot or something it's kind of crooked um so you can change out different colors I did these with jellies I really like how that turned out and this one is 13 rows. This is as big as the, the loom is. And your loom will creak a whole bunch. So just be really careful if you're going to do it. I'll give you my uh, disclaimer because I don't want to, you know, I would hate for you to break your loom on it. So just be really careful. I would not use any, um, any of the stronger bands like the silicone because it just creaks a whole bunch with the uh, 13 rows. It looks really pretty though. But I think I like the, I like 11 rows is my favorite. I like how, I like the width of it and cause this one's pretty big. So that is that one. And this one, of course, is that one. I really like this one. It's very, the colors stand out so much. And the white is actually the glow in the dark. So when they light up, it's a really cool, really cool design. So, and um, I'll say this to you in the, um, the, the lettering part, is the lines that go vertical tend to be skinny. See, this is a single row, and that's a single row, the yellow. And look how much bolder that is. So, a lot of times, when you do the single row, it, like, loses it a little bit. That one looks okay, I think, because it has black on each side to make it stand out. But, um, so just be careful when you're, when you're doing your pattern. Like, I have... So I did this one, and where is he? There he is. So on here, it looks really gay. They look really, like the arms like really bold. And then when you look on here, they're like really skinny. So I think if I was to do this one again, I would add, I keep finding dog hair everywhere. Um, I would add an extra row maybe on here for that one. Because really everything else is okay. But I would definitely add one on here. Because it looked like little skinny arms. They're not very scary. So that's what I mean about how they look, you know, the same with this right here. But once you get them on here, it doesn't look as 
Okay, so that's that one. And this one is probably my favorite. I love Argyle. And so when I first did this design, I did it with the purple and green. And as you can see, I've worn this one a lot. Good thing about these is you can flip them out. Because there's not one side or the other. So I really love how this turned out. So I tried again, and I just did a different color pattern. And the way that these go, I don't know if you can see the white and the gray diamonds, like one will lose a corner. And so I just did the white because the white stands out more and it's sharper. So, and the gray would kind of just fade, so it wouldn't matter as much. So, I love this one. I love the purple. So, that is the Argyle one. So, this is my Autism Awareness bracelet. And originally, this was my first, actually, my first attempt was a tiny little one that I gave up on right away. Um, because I didn't double the vertical lines like I was talking about earlier. So, this one is like that and I really wanted to add um, I initially when I started doing this I liked only doing uneven numbers but for this pattern it just looks so much better with even numbers so I sucked it up and I figured out how to do it and I just when you do an even number of rows instead of having a center row which is easy to pick out because it's the middle one you just pick either the fourth row or the fifth row and you keep that as your center and that's the one when you're making the tight knit that you double and you work off of so if you've made the tight knit before you understand what I'm saying if not then you probably don't know okay so this was my original actually I think this was no I don't remember okay so I decided to do an eight row and this is the pattern for that one and this one looks so much better and I actually gave that one away but if you want to go look at my Instagram, there's a picture of it. And this one looks, with the eight rows, it looks so much better and so much uh, more even. And um, I like this one a lot better. So, and it turns out so awesome. So, and I love to bring awareness to autism. So that is that one. Okay, so if you're going to do lettering, this one, these letters are five uh, rows tall. So, like I said before, when you have a single um, vertical row. See how much better that looks when it has two instead of just one? I mean, it just looks so much better. This one also was done with LE bands, so it's a little bit fuller, too. But um, I think it just looks so much better. The letters are a lot more bold. So it is hard to figure out the lettering because, like, this is the B. It does look a little funny. I'm not in love with that, but I tried different variations, and that was, like, the best. Let's see what the things were going the other way. Um, so this is if you're going to do five. If you're going to do a thinner, smaller bracelet. And, like, my R is not that hot. I don't, I don't know how that's going to turn out. See, I kept trying. So, like I said, you're going to go through a lot of graph paper. And graph paper is pretty cheap. I don't think it's that expensive. But... So that's if you're doing the five row. Now I like doing, these are actually um, nine rows high. And then I add the shadow, which makes it 10. So I love how this look I, looks. I think it stands out so much better. And I just love it. So you can even just do it just like that but I think that looks so pretty. So I did do an alphabet of these. And so I don't know if you want a screenshot or whatever. I'll move it around. Um, I tried doing gray with this one. And um, it just didn't stand out as much as the black, but I wanted the black with the rainbow, so... It doesn't look too bad. And I also messed up a little bit, which drives me absolutely crazy. But it was I was so far along before I noticed that I just have to live with it and stare at it every time I look at this bracelet. 
So that is up to Q. So this would be the shadow part, the black, or you could do a different color. Or just do like, if you had like a light purple and then do dark purple as the shadow, that would be pretty. Of course, because I love purple. So that is that. I don't know if this is helpful. You can let me know. Let me know if this is, if you have any questions. I kept trying to think of all the questions that people ask me or comment about, um, doing this, doing the letters and stuff, and I can't remember them all. And I'll probably think of a million things I should have said once I post this video. So there's the last part and a question mark. And so that okay. okay, so to set up your loom for an 11 row tight knit, you are going to have the three single they're by themselves, and then the two on either side are doubled up. So they're both doubled up. So this is for 11. So if you were going to do seven, a seven row bracelet, this is how the setup would be. So the three and then the just the two sides doubled. So for all the rest, if it's an even number, you just double them up. Easy. And then if um, your the other ones would just be the single one in the middle, like 13, 5, they get doubled up, the single one in the middle, and then just keep doubling as it goes. So the only one that's really different is the 7 and 11. So it's very important when you are doing your bracelet to mark off the rows as you go. Like I usually do little see the little dots here? That's usually for when I've completed the row. You can use like a bracelet and like cover each one and try to move it as you go. It just helps, especially if you're doing anything else. Like I said, I've so many times watching TV and I've had to go back and fix a pattern. Hopefully I catch it early enough. Um so just make sure that you keep track of your pattern, especially if it's intricate or lettering. Oh my gosh, you be really careful with the lettering. So, and you will have hit or misses. Like, I tried to do the argyle in, like, a smaller one. It's kind of like a bad drawing. I was trying to go fast. And so that kind of is how that one turned out, and I kind of gave up. I think because my original argyle was so pretty and so, like, it was like, you could totally tell it was argyle. That, um... I wasn't happy with this. I like the colors though. So, but like from far away, it doesn't look as bad. Up close, hmm, on camera, it doesn't look too bad. And the person then just wasn't happy with it. So, like, and I had like hit or misses where I like, I kind of like it, but I don't love it. I'm like in love with this pink, neon pink. And, like this one, the. I have, I have little bits of bracelets everywhere because I like started design, and you can't. The hardest thing with this is that with when the designs come through, you don't know until you know you get this far along whether you're gonna like it or not. So, because it has to like come through the the um, the what we'll call it. But um, and the other thing I was gonna say before I forget is when you do a larger bracelet, when it comes through, this way, when it comes through, it comes through like this. So, as far or as close as you can put these, the better, because it helps keep the loom stable. Like if you have it totally to the ends, it like it's not as stable and it creaks a lot more. Um, but it like if I was gonna do eleven, this is totally fine because it comes in, and then it ends up coming out like that. So there's that. So hopefully I've answered questions that you had or hopefully I've been a little bit helpful. Um, if you want to ask me a question in the comment thing, and I can maybe help you out as best I can. Um, a lot of these designs I post on Instagram. So as I do the, the picture stuff, so you want to go and check that out at Seawolf, S-C-L. Um, I know that uh, Rainbow Loom has a new um, 
loom coming out called the alpha loom, but I think it's only seven rows. So you could do the same thing with this and um, just make it seven rows and you can have some really cool designs. I think there's like bracelets.com or bracelets.net, friendship bracelets. You can look at cross stitch patterns, um, perler bead patterns. Um, I did for like this one, I just look up pixel art and they had a whole bunch of them. They had some really cool like Zelda ones that I wanted to do, but a lot of them are too big. Um, they're like 15 rows and more, which I don't think I could do that. I don't know. Maybe I'll try that. But, um, so like these were, these were a good number that I could get in there. But, um, I keep saying, but I'm sorry. There it is. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I can try to help you out. And thanks for watching.